Hello. Those of you who watch my channel know I've made a lot of little mini kits, travel kits, survival kits out of Altoids tins. And now we eat Tic Tacs, not Altoids. So I'm converting most of my kits to Tic Tac boxes since that's now my unlimited supply of little candy tins. Uh, but I've made things such as uh, a little tactical tool tin. I'll have a video about that someday. Uh, this is a uh, travel toiletry kit. I'll have a video on that. Uh, first aid kits, survival kits. I used to wrap these with a paracord because that's a very useful thing to have on you, especially in a survival situation. However, it means you can't open this quickly and easily. So I now prefer using my uh, bracelet method. This is called a mega bracelet. I have a video about that. You can carry an unlimited amount of paracord just depending on how fat you want it. So if you want to carry 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, 50 feet of paracord, as long as you don't mind a giant fat bracelet, you can make it any size you want. Anyway, I'm abandoning this outer wrap and I had made one, I call this a uh, all-in-one 5C survival kit. It's a tic tac box design. Uh, but I'm going to undo it because I don't like the paracord on the outside. I prefer the bracelet design. Uh, so let's open this up and see what's inside. It's 5C. Uh, that concept in survival kit design is from, I think, Dave Canterbury. That's where I first heard about it. He was one of the original uh, dual survival TV show hosts. Uh, and the five C's that you want in a survival kit are, if I can remember them, cutting, basically means you want to have a knife, combustion, fancy word for you want to be able to start a fire, container, you want to be able to carry water and ideally sterilize it, cordage, paracord for instance would be an example of cordage, and finally cover. You want something like a wool blanket, something to keep you warm, uh, keep you protected from the elements. So how on earth could I fit 5C into something that I can fit in my shirt pocket? Uh, that's what this video is about. We're going to open this up and take a look at world's smallest 5C survival kit. videos and they say you can't fit a complete survival kit into an Altoids tin, let alone a Tic Tac box. That's not the concept here. The concept is to have sort of like a extra backup kit uh, or maybe just something small enough that you could carry on you every single day. Uh, I could carry this on me every day, but you know what I'm not going to carry on me every day? A backpack filled with survival goods. This you can slip in your pocket, uh, whereas big survival kits you can't. And the concept here is you want to always have the kit on you. So if you, for instance, trip in the woods, uh, break your ankle and have to crawl to safety like happened a few weeks ago to some guy, uh, you don't freeze to death in the forest uh, because you've got your little kit so that you can start a fire, cut some wood, uh, maybe make a little tent, stuff like that. So that's what the concept is uh, with these, these things. Things. Uh, anyway, have you tried this flavor? Pina Colada? Excellent. My favorite Tic Tac flavor. So, this is obviously a little bit bigger than a Tic Tac box. I have to had to extend it a little. You'll see why. And the concept is I want to carry this either in my uh, pocket, in my uh, jeans pocket, maybe a breast pocket, in my jacket. Uh, it also has a loop up here so I can attach it to my keys if I want to carry it uh, on my keys. Uh, I wanted something as small as possible. Uh, so let's see what we what we have in here. So we've got several feet of paracord. This is the smaller variety. This is not 550 paracord. It's something like 375, I forget. But you can open it up and get to at least one extra strand so it will double in length. Uh, or you can get to that inner strand to uh, use it for fishing, for instance. 
Uh, so here's the kit. I put some camo tape on the edges, uh, but fluorescent tape on the sides. Uh, and this is also going to be very stiff. Uh, I call these outer outer parts uh, squash clamps, and they're good because you can take them on and off quickly and easily uh, to get to your goods. This one's two-sided, so you can be camo if you want to be camo. Uh, you can be fluorescent orange if you want to be fluorescent orange. So it makes it sort of like a, uh, a hunter's vest. Uh, but let's see how long it takes for me to get this one off. Also, it gives you some space to hide some extra extra doodads under the strap if you want to. And over the many years that this has been stored in my kit, in my bag, uh, it's gotten a little bit sticky because the uh, duct tape glue sort of migrates a bit. Okay, I can feel it moving now. So, first thing is the dual-sided supply of uh, duct tape. Again, camo on one side, fluorescent on the other. So you've got some, some uh, fluorescent tape, and I've marked here 1M. Uh, I write on my uh, squash clamps how long they are, so you know how much, how much uh, duct tape do you have. One meter. Uh, Duct tape is not one of the five C's, but I certainly consider it a key element to any survival kit. should have a stash of at least a meter, if not more, of uh, duct tape. Usually when you need duct tape, <clears throat> one meter is going to cover you for your tear or whatever it is you're going to repair. Uh, so duct tape, I certainly think, is a key element. So here's the kit. Uh, and one thing occupies a huge amount of this kit. By the way, this could not fit a... Uh, tic-tac box fully shut. This actually stuck out a little bit, just like a millimeter, but of course when it's clamped with all that stuff, it's going to stay nice and intact. So this comes off. Now let's see what we have inside here. Oh, I think this is to help pull everything out. This is a jute twine, which is an excellent form of tinder. And if I remember correctly, I designed this, so if I pull this, it helps pull everything out. Yep. Some things are falling out of here. So we have a razor blade. There's our cutting device. Not as good as a full-size knife, but, you know, hopefully you have another knife on you. This is just a backup kit, remember? So razor blade, uh, MacGyver super tool also known as a paper clip. Uh, this one's insulated, so it can also work as an electrically conductive wire. Uh, you can use this for all sorts of things. You can also bend it for to make it uh, just a stiff piece of wire for poking or repairs or building things. Ferrocerium rod to uh, start fires. So there's your combustion, cutting, here's a uh, twist, twist tie, good for uh, sealing bags and such. Here's a uh, mirror for signaling, it's a plastic mirror, good for signaling with sunlight. Here's a tinder quick that I've compressed flat in a vise. 
but you puff it up by twisting it around. So in addition to the jute twine, you also have a tinder quick. And then this is several things. This, for one thing, is a sewing needle uh, for doing emergency repairs. You can also magnetize it to float it on water to use as a compass to help find your way. Uh, also, sometimes if you get splinters, having a needle or a pin on you is good. Notice it's pre-threaded. In survival kits, you want your needles to be pre-threaded because what if your hands are broken or freezing cold uh, or it's very windy out? Good luck threading a needle in, in an emergency situation. And then this is dental floss. Uh, I can't remember how much I put on here, but uh, you obviously unravel it. See if it'll slide off. Yes, it'll slide off. So that's also another form of cordage, dental floss. Very strong for its size and weight, complete with needle for sewing. The jute twine. And this is a space blanket cover. This will protect you from rain. It'll keep you warm. I use what's called a Z-fold. You take your space blanket and then you can fold it in the shape of a letter Z. And that makes it slim enough to fit inside the uh, Tic Tac box. Now, I'll warn you, uh, I did this and I thought, oh cool, it just barely fits. And I was able to fit a few other things to make it uh, 5C. Uh, however, when I then attempted to do it, uh, it does stick out just a little bit though, uh, but then when I attempted to do it with another uh, space blanket, it didn't work. Space blankets come in different sizes, so you're going to specifically need this size. Uh, let me get a tape measure, I'll be right back in a minute. Oh, and here is our water purification tablet. It's an MP1, uh, made by Catadyne probably expired I need to replace that that's another reason I don't like the whipping on the outside is you need to open your kit up and replace uh, perishable parts every year or so uh, so it's much easier not not to do that and it goes to this bag this is our water containment bag this is just a shopping bag from Whole Foods uh, but these are watertight you can even fit like two liters of water or more in these And then you can sterilize the water with the water purification tab. Uh, so there's your container. I'll be right back with a tape measure to measure the space blanket. Hold on. Okay, so the uh, space blanket needs to be Looks like four and a half by three. So when you buy your space blanket, be sure it says its folded size is four and a half by three if you want to be able to fit it in the Tic Tac box. Now let's see if there's anything else in here that I forgot to show you. Oh, what's this? Oh, a straw with a expandable part too. Uh, you can use a straw for various applications, including a blowpipe helping to uh, build fires, uh, helps you drink the water from the container, the plastic bag. Uh, you can make a filter by stuffing this with cotton or the reconstituted uh, tinder quick that acts as a water filter. Uh, so that has various aspects. I think that's it. Yep, that's it. Okay, so let's see if I got all the five C's here. Uh, cutting. I would actually have a knife on me, but there's also a uh, 
razor blade. You can also fit one of the slim uh, uh, Swiss Army knives inside these kits, by the way. I have a video on making these uh, pocket sized ones very reflective by taking the scales off and polishing them. I call it a poor man's Alox. Uh, officially, this is an Alox. Uh, it has the metal scales instead of the red, keeps it nice and skinny. And the advantage to both of these, whether you make your own or you buy one, is it makes it skinny enough to fit inside the case, complete with the space blanket. So that would be another option. Uh, cutting, combustion, in the ferrocerium rod, container for holding water, including purification tab, cutting, combustion, container, cordage, I had two kinds, and cover. So there we go, world's smallest 5C survival kit. Oh, I overlooked it, but uh, there's a little magnet here at the base of the jute twine, uh, so you can use that for uh, magnetizing your needle for making the compass. This is a glow stick. Uh, this was uh, stuck in one of the corners of the kit, and it can act as a tent marker, for instance, to mark your tent. Basically, you snap this, the little inner, inner element breaks open, the two fluids mix, and then it glows in the dark. Basically, it's a micro... I think they call it a cyanoloom stick. Uh, I bought mine, this was a, a kid's uh, earring. Uh, I bought it at the party store. Uh, you snap it, it glows, uh, so you have a little bit of light, but it's basically to act as a marker. So here's an exploded view of the complete kit. I've reconfigured the paracord into my parafob configuration. This can carry on your keys and whatnot, and deploy in only one second. We have the duct tape, paper clip, jute twine, straw, ferrocerium rod, twist tie, magnet, cyanoloom stick, empty tic tac box, reflection mirror, razor blade, catadyne MP1, purification tab, tinder quick, 20 feet of dental floss with pre threaded needle, Z folded space blanket, and the water collection bag. Vigorously. The uh, green stick is definitely enough to read read a map with. One hour later, just as bright.